Lord Conwell, can I please get a blood-curdling scream for Nathan Head? Hello. <laughs> oh, got to get to sit down. Oh. Nathan, hello. I'm fine. I'm loving this stage. Do you know? Does anyone is anyone reminded of Elvira's Haunted Hills? Has anyone seen that? No. It's a good film. Check it out. This looks just like the set. Anyway. It looks awesome, and it's a little bit scary. I must say, it's quite cool when you walk over, like you're coming in through here, yeah. and you see so many serial killers, zombies. Killer clowns. Killer, oh, no, no, one. no, don't. <laughs> Nathan and I already had this conversation, because yeah. Nathan, as you are probably aware, was in Theatre of Horror. Where Theatre he of Fear? Fear, sorry, God, it's a horror comedy. AKA the Midnight Horror Show in America, it got released as that for some reason. And you were a killer clown, I and I'm was. scared of clowns. Yes. So, how did that come about, Nathan? Well, it was at the time, this was about five years ago, I was working with a filmmaker in Edinburgh, and he was friends with this filmmaker down south in South Wales, and he recommended me for the role. And ironically, I did actually apply for the role myself, but I didn't get it, but as soon as this other filmmaker recommended me, I, I got the part. So, it's who you know, that's what it is. So, as an actor, what, what like, kind of got you interested in the role of a killer clown? Well, I'm a big horror fan anyway, and I just, well, it, it's just a really good role. I was really excited because I was told it was going to be a makeup, and I like working in prosthetic makeup, and it, I, you probably can't tell from the film because I've got clown makeup, but I am covered in burn makeup from head to toe, well, to, to about here. Um, it was like a full latex prosthetic that covered my left shoulder, my whole face, and it took about three hours to apply. But you can't, you can't see that in the film, but that, that's what I enjoyed. It was a bit cold, but as latex is, has anyone ever wore liquid latex? It's freezing when you first put it on. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. Oh, You get used to it after a bit when it dries, but you, yeah. So is it exciting, like, when you... Because I've never been in a horror film before. No? I like watching them, maybe yeah. sometimes with a duvet over my head, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but what's it like to actually be in one when you know that your main task is to scare people? I don't know, it's strange because I, I've got quite a lot, oh, you're whistling. I've got quite um, a strange tolerance with horror, not a lot scares me. So, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm more, it's, the, the gross films are the ones that affect me more, like the human centipede, we've got Miss Six over there. Um, it's the gross films like uh, Human Centipede, Hostel, Serbian film, but we won't talk about that, that, that get to me, because I'm not easily scared by films anyway. I'm scared in real life, but, but by films. So it's the gross ones that get to me. So it's easy working in a horror film for me because I, I just enjoy it and I don't get scared. <laughs> so you, I know that you have done some work years ago at Salford's Art I Theater. did, yeah. I actually know Scott and Ronnie. Oh, right, yeah. Ronnie yeah. Ellis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, I know. Small world. So did you actually always plan, because you're a fan of horror, to go into this genre or was it just an accident well, that it happened um, and then you progressed. I've been a huge horror fan since I was a kid. When I was a little boy, my mum and dad let me watch. They didn't let me watch big films. Like, I, I think the scariest film I watched was Carry On Screaming, probably. But, <laughs> so it's kind of things like that that got me into horror. But strangely, you brought up the Salford Arts Theatre because that's kind of what got me into horror. Because at the time, I was doing a play with a guy that was working on a film called Mark McCready and the Archangel Murders. I don't know if anyone remembers that one. It did pretty big about 2008-ish when it came out and because I was working with him at the time he was reading the script and I read the script and I really loved the film so I got in touch with the filmmaker and they let me read for the villain which was a shape-shifting oh I, sh I shouldn't forget this what's the difference between an incubus and a succubus which is the male one does anyone know? anybody know oh, I'm an incubus yeah there we are I should know I, I read the script yeah and so that was really fun to play because I get to look like myself, the human person that I was copying, and the demon version, which was like this big bat thing with wings, and yeah, me in latex again. There we go. <laughs> so how do you get on with, you know when there's other people, like uh, your love interest, oh, shall gosh. we say, in Theatre of Fear, well, my how did she react to you? Uh, uh, <laughs> she ran out of the room screaming. Yeah, have you seen the film? Um, for those that haven't seen Theatre of Fear, there's my love interest. I kind of skin her ex-boyfriend and wear his skin as a suit. So It's a beautiful moment, it's, ladies and gentlemen. I, th I think it's really romantic. It's, but <laughs> yeah, so in the, the funny thing is, in the script, um, she held a knife 
and I pushed into me and it killed her. But in the film, the way it's edited, neither of us die in that shot, so I don't know whether they wanted to keep it open for her to return for a sequel, but we never did a sequel, so it doesn't matter. But in the script, she did die, she fell onto my knife, but we cut that shot. So what was the background with the family? Like, did, did they ever tell you like, why the family decided that they were gonna do this midnight theater show and kill people? Yes, yes, well, this was something we all talked through during cash read-throughs, and there's a character you never see in the film, which is the mother. And we always came up with the idea that the mother was the fortune teller in the circus, and she, every, every single kid, because we're all different, like there's a Welsh one, there's an American one, there's Mimi, which is a bit northern. So we came up with the idea that she had a kid in each town that they were touring, and yeah. And there was a backstory with, with the ventriloquist character, when he visits the sea, there was a, a line in there about, we used to come here with mother. And so we kind of expanded on that, that that was where mother died. You don't see it in the film. This is just something we all came up with as cast. Um, again, it's one of them things that probably would have been explored if we'd have done a sequel, but we never did. And it's kind of annoying because it ends on a cliffhanger and people want more, but I don't know. Maybe one day we'll do a revival, I don't know, but. Do you reckon if maybe we all started tweeting and yes, saying... Yes, everyone, please tweet film. saying we need Theatre of Fear 2 because I want to come back. Even if it means two or three hours in latex again, I want to go back. It'll be fun. <laughs> Not something I thought I'd hear you say today. No, no, no. <laughs> so along with horror, now you might all laugh at this, and Nathan, you'll probably laugh at this as well, mm -hmm. but I'm terrified of Doctor Who. What? Yeah. What? I remember being a kid, and I remember thinking, Ace is Ace. Ace is Ace. Yeah. She should return, but yeah. But I was terrified of the Daleks. I don't know why, because when I look at them now, I'm like, actually, it wasn't that scary. But at the time, they did. And you've been in Doctor Who. I have, yeah. What I was, was in, that like? Well, that was really fun. I was in the 2007 Christmas special with Kylie Minogue. Um, it was really fun because now I'm a fan of Doctor Who, so I was watching it at the time. And when I was up for the role, well, I was up for a different role at first. I was up for the role of uh, the chief steward at the beginning. Um, as soon as I got put forward, I said to my agent, it's the Titanic one, isn't it? Because I remember that cliffhanger with Martha Jones where he, you know, everyone remembers the cliffhanger with the um, lifeguard and he goes, what, what? You know, that bit. So I knew it was set on the Titanic, but I didn't know it was a spaceship until we did the wardrobe test. At first, I thought it was just going to be the normal Titanic. It wasn't until we did the wardrobe test that we were told that we were all aliens. I was like, oh, so it's, a, it's going to be a spaceship Titanic. Isn't that a bit like Futurama? But no one ever questioned it at the time. But, so yeah, that was pretty good. It was fun working with Kylie. My chair's going to collapse. I'm going to stand up. Can we get another chair, please? Ooh, that would have been ugly, wouldn't about. it? Yeah, I'll stand up. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm fine standing. Yeah, it was fine working with Kylie. One thing I remember about working with Kylie was um, she was so energetic in the morning. I mean, I got up really early today. I was up at like six and I still feel like a zombie. But Kylie, we were in wardrobe but makeup at like four in the morning, five, and she was hyper bouncing about and singing. I know, I don't know where she got her energy from. I really don't. I, I was like half dead until three in the afternoon. It was mad. But... Okay, slight digression from where I thought I was going to go yeah, with sorry. this. But back people, to horror, back to horror. People might be interested in this. So Kylie Minogue, the princess of pop. Yes. Who do you think she would be good playing a horror character as? I don't you know. You know her? Yeah, I would say... I kind of... Because I'm, I'm a fan of... Does anyone remember that Nicole Kidman film, uh, Practical Magic? I, uh, yeah, it's a great film, isn't it? You put the lime in the coconut. I, or is it rum in the coconut? It's rum, isn't it? Put the it? lime in the coconut yeah, and yeah, shake it all one. about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Kylie would be good in a film like that, playing sort of like a modern-day Wiccan sort of character, because she's got that sort of look, hasn't she? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should get in touch, and I you know. could be in it, and it could be the sequel. I should be in it, I should be in it. Yes, 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 yes. Pitching ideas here. If anybody has any ideas, come and see me and Nathan, and we'll get them to people. <laughs> you should be on commission. Yes. Yes, yes. Exactly. But bringing it back to horror, sorry, because I did move slightly. Yeah. Um, so we've mentioned the films that you Peter were just affair. discussing that scare you a little bit. Oh, yeah. Like, like human the, I call it the human caterpillar. I feel like it sounds a bit nicer. Well, isn't that, it don't, they call it that in the third one, don't they? There's a human caterpillar in the third one, isn't there? Oh, God, there's a human something. It's the massive. One... It goes the all one, around sorry. the prison. No, 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 but in the third one, the one set in the prison, isn't there a human caterpillar with people that have their arms cut off? Oh, is it there? I'll take your word for it. I can't remember. We'll ask Alona later. Yeah, yeah, we'll ask her during her Q&A in a bit and see. But, so I'm guessing that that's not the kind of film that you would 
I mean, would you be in something like that that's really gross? I would. The only reason I wouldn't is nobody wants to see me half naked. So that I, I would, but I'd do it fully clothed. So. You could have your head stamped or something. Yeah, I know. I know. Have you seen the new Halloween film yet? No, it only opened the other day, didn't it? We Haven't saw it last night. Is it good? It's good. Is it good? There was a few moments where you were like, Ugh. I am going to go and see it. I still need to. Oh, I saw The Nun. Have you seen The Nun? The Nun's no, good, yeah. Yet. Interesting trivia about The Nun. The guy that plays my dad in Theatre of Fear has a cameo in The Nun in a flashback that's set in the Middle Ages. I won't say what the flashback's about because it's kind of a spoiler, but it's a really good flashback. I'm hoping it's another spin off of a spin off of The Conjuring. But yeah, that's really good. I'll, I'll have to watch it because one of my friends put it on Facebook and said I rather enjoyed this. And I thought, ooh, yes. I'll get her to go to the cinema to yes. watch it with me. But what, I mean, what would be, let's take every fictional character that's out there, who would be the one that you would aspire to be? as an actor. Oh, don't say that. Because I said this once in a newspaper article years ago, and I mentioned Doug Bradley, and they ran the story that I want to replace him when he's dead, and it came out really bad. I said, no, no, I didn't mean that. I just meant that I love the Hellraiser films, and I would like to be in a Hellraiser film, but they kind of worded it. I want to replace Doug Bradley, and I never want to replace Doug Bradley. I really admire him. But, um, so I never liked that question, but yeah, I'd like to be in a Hellraiser film. But the series would have to get rebooted because I think it's going in the wrong direction. But that's just my personal opinion. I think I was scared of you as a clown, so seeing you as a pinhead. Yeah, yeah, that would be, that'd be too bad. I think I'd be just yeah. as scared. Do you know what, Nathan? Speaking of scary, where's the microphone? Shall we throw out to the audience to see if anybody's got any questions yes. for you? I'm just looking for the microphone. Oh, I'm so sorry. Have you just walked... I think he was just taking a break to go and sit down <laughs> and then... Can we, can we get a microphone? Oh, right, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm such a pest, aren't I? Cal? Where's Cal? Two, two, check. check Cal, can you get the microphone, please, darling? Everybody, Cal, can we get a cheer? Great. So does anybody have any questions for Nathan? Anybody? This one there. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just mentioned uh, Doug Bradley then. Uh, sorry? You just mentioned Doug Bradley then, yeah. I did, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you wanted to do the Hell Priest, could you actually do his his voice. Kind of. There was an um, interesting fact. There was a vampire film I worked on a few years ago called Sleep, and it never got released because they were never happy with the edit, and I recently got told they're going to re-edit it, and it's going to be released as Dreamers. But in that, I was told to do a Doug Bradley voice, and I tried, and it came out something like... Um, no, hang on. No tears, please. I just did that kind of gravelly, deep voice, and they added a filter, and it did sound a bit like Doug Bradley, but... I, that was as close as we were going. Nice costume, by the way, groovy. Any I other do. impressions? Groovy. No, I can do a groovy, kind of. Can you do a groovy? Come on. Oh, come on. Groovy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Any other questions? You'll have to bear with me. I can't speak very well with my face. Um, with a horror genre, basically being around a lot of real-life serial killers, who is your favorite real-life serial killer? Oh, sorry. sorry, what was that? Can you put the mic a bit closer? What, was your, what is your favorite real... Hmm? Bear with us. Okay, let's go. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, basically, my question was, who is your real life, your favorite real life serial killer? My favorite serial killer? Real life. Real life. Oh, golly. Well, <laughs> I was recently in a reconstruction for H.H. H. Holmes. Do you know, does anyone know any of the story about him? He was like a Victorian killer. He's kind of the one I know a bit about, but he's not my favorite one. Um, I don't think I've got a favorite one, really. I do keep meaning to watch that thing about Dharma at high school, so... What's that called? Does anyone know? Dharma. Is it's it just called, called Dharma? Dharma? Yeah. 
Yeah, because I because I recently watched a documentary about him, and even though I think what he did was very very wrong, obviously it's interesting, and I'd like to watch that prequel. It's about him at high school, isn't it? Yeah, it's about him from his childhood up to his first murder. Sorry, I'm a massive serial killer fan. I'm an absolute sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> I like you. I like serial killers too. Who's your favourite? I've got a list. Go on. H. H. Holmes, Ed Gein, Lady Bathra, um, Dharma, and the good-looking Ted Bundy. See, Gein's quite an interesting character, isn't he? I was always a fan of Bundy. No, I, mean, I don't mean a fan, as in a fan <laughs> of his work. I mean, well, yeah. I'm, into the, I'm into the psychology of it, yeah, like yeah. real-life scary I stuff. And I love the fact that everybody thought he was going to be the president. He was going to run for a Republican what? candidate. Was he really? He was so apparently charismatic and really good with people. And behind the scenes, he's like... Pfft. Well, anyone can be president. Well, I, yeah. no, let's not get, we've, into, we've let's not get into politics. Let's not get into politics. <laughs> Good choices, though. Yeah, yeah, speaking, of, speaking of Ed Gein, that inspired the bit in Theatre of Fear where I wear the human skin suit. And there's I in, they did. in the background, you can't see it very clearly, but in the scenes in the caravan, in the trailer, you can see human nipples around the, the rail yeah. at the top. Yeah. Yeah, you can only see them in the background, like decorating the, is it called a dado rail? You know, it goes around the edge of a room. Yeah, yeah. Human nipples. <laughs> If, if people aren't aware of his work, Ed Gein and I think it's Ed Gein and Ted Bundy are the people who are used as inspiration for the serial killer uh, Buffalo Bill in The Silence of the Lambs. Mm. Serial killer expert here. Uh, Buffalo Bill, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface, um, also part of Hannibal Lex because he was a cannibal as well. And there's quite a few as well that my mind's gone completely blank. I want to have a cup of coffee with her. Yes. I think we'd have a really interesting chat. It just goes to show there's nothing scarier than real life, really, does it? That's, that's it. Exactly. Now, I'm going to mention this quite a lot today, so I want to ask you this, and oh, I think right. I'm going to ask every guest. So the first horror film that I ever saw by myself was when I was about 16, and I decided to close the curtains in the house and scare myself. I watched Scream. Ooh. That was the film, right? Rock on. I was hardcore. Okay? That shows your age. You just said how old you were when it came out. I, I think I'm, we're the same age, aren't we? 1980. 82. All right, I'm older. Extremely oh late 20s. And um, so I watched that, and there's an amazing quote in it where the, uh, one of the killers, I can't remember his name now, Screech Ultrin, uh, I can't even say his name, he says, movies don't make psychopaths, they make psychopaths more creative. Right? So what I want to know, as somebody who's been in a scary film and you love yes. the horror genre, yep. do you think that... Nowadays, it seems like you were saying before, it's about the gore, it's about the shock, it's about the sores, the hostels, all of this. Do you think that people are in effect showing people, oh, if you're a bit Ted Bundy-ish? You mean inspiring people? Yeah. I don't think so, because we had this thing um, in the 80s with all of the banning the video nasties because it was to blame for violence. And I don't think it's true because horror films have been around for a very long time. And violence has been around for even longer, so I don't, I don't think so. The only time I think that is I watch a lot of crime shows on TV, like Law and Order and things like that, and I always think if I did kill someone, I know how to hide the body because you see the mistakes they make on the show. But I would never kill anyone, don't worry. I don't even kill flies, you know. But, but yeah, you, you do pick up. I would never do it, and I don't think that films inspire people in any way to do that. People are in control of their own behavior. Okay, I just thought I'd ask if, the, yeah, you know, no, if there was somebody out question, there, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It is interesting, it and is. it's like, what is the scariest thing that you've ever seen? The scariest Fictional thing? and non-fictional, if you want, or just in film? Well, I used to live in a little town nearby called Ashton Underline. I don't know if anyone, has anyone ever heard of it? There were some screams then, was that because I mentioned Ashton, or did someone see a clown? I don't, all right. Oh gosh, another tame cider. Yeah, I lived there for a while, and do you know Hearst Cross? Well, I live near Hearst Cross. I don't want to say any more about that, but yeah. And I kind of experienced a ghost while I was there. There was this scary thing in the cellar. There was a door with a T-bar on it that instead of a lock, you know, that like spun to lock the door. One day I heard a noise, and I turned around, and the cellar door just spun like a propeller, you know, the, the thing. Ages later, I got a, a medium in, a friend I knew, and she said that it was a little girl that was carrying a bowl downstairs and she fell and died. And ever since she said that, I never went downstairs again. And 
I, I don't know whether the people that live there now have ever experienced it, but yeah, that was probably the scariest thing because that seemed real and I physically saw it in front of me go like a propeller. It was what caused that? It was who knows? But yeah. Scary. Any yeah. more questions? Speaking of scary, come on, you lot. Otherwise, I'll ask another question and we'll get back onto serial killers. Is some. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so, looking forward to the future, then, what are yeah. the plans for Nathan Head? Well, I recently finished a film called Ouija Geist that's kind of stuck with distributors at the moment. That's due out soon. That's uh, a basic story of a girl moving into a house, finding a Ouija board in the back garden, and summoning a demon that looks a bit like. I can't say the word because there's kids in, but it's like a tentacle thing that comes out of a sink. And that's pretty good. Yeah, I got yeah. Innuendo. Um, I don't know when that's due out because, as I say, that's stuck with the distributor. And there's a zombie film called Virus of the Dead. I had a small role in. That's due out either the end of next year or the beginning of next year. And only last week, I finished all my scenes for the two Blood Curse films. I don't know if anyone's been following those. Um, so they're due out. Well, when they're finished post-production, they'll be due out. They're pretty good. There's some cool names in that. Lloyd Kaufman's in that. I don't know if anyone knows him from Troma. He plays the main girl's dad. Yeah. Sounds like it's going to be an interesting time. Yes, and I do start work on a zombie film called The Rage 2. That's a sequel to The Rage. Um, I think that's starting very soon. I think the end of October, we're doing read-throughs. Yeah, that should be good. That's all like first person. It's all done with GoPros on everyone's head, if you can picture that. That would be quite scary because the zombies here, I don't know if you've uh, seen the zombie bride. I, I can see a zombie maintenance worker. Oh, yeah. What happened there? How did he die? <laughs> what is the fascination with zombies? Nathan, and to the audience, what is the fascination with it? They seem to just be well, getting more and more popular. Oh, my God, he's coming for us. He's coming, he's coming for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's what's scary. Look at it. That's yeah. awesome. Has anybody got a <laughs> hammer? You go for the head, right? According to Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> Or has anyone got any old vinyl records? <laughs> See, how can you act in stuff like this? Does it not scare you? I've never really played a zombie. Well, I have. I played a soul, which was kind of like a zombie, but I've been in zombie films. That's oh, awesome. Oh, no, there's, th there's three of them. Can they climb stairs? No, that's Daleks. And they can, but yeah. I wish you could see how they're looking at us right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if there's no more questions, then as the zombies are starting to come for us, Nathan, this might be the right time for Speaking us to Speaking of which, run. this zombie seems familiar. Do we know each other? Just growl if we do. Yeah, we do, yeah. And you as well, <laughs> I know you too. I know everyone. <laughs> you heard it here first, Nathan can actually communicate with zombies. <laughs> the so, zombie whisperer. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your first guest of today. It's Nathan Head. <laughs> Oh, just one final note before I go. I have got limited edition uncut versions of Blazer Gory to sell if anyone wants to pick one up. Very, very limited one. I think I've only got about 10 left. They only did a limited batch. Can we do a competition? We certainly can. How about, I'm going to keep on talking about this all day, but to win one of these, a signed one from yourself, when I was talking about the blood curdling screams before, I'm going to get at some point today somebody with a microphone to go around the audience and I want to hear the best scream. And whoever, you can, you can do the, uh, yeah, the championship? Yeah. The, what am I thinking? The judging. The, the scream off. Yeah, the, the judging. The scream off. Yes. <laughs> We're going to do a scream off and whoever wins will win that. How's that sound? Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to be coming around to make sure that you guys are screaming in a bit. Nathan, it's been a pleasure.